Hello everyone. My book tour is the victim of coronavirus shutdowns, but shut us down as they may, you can't shut us up, which is why I'm going to talk to you about animal kind. So unless you're about to walk your dog, this is for you. I think we're all still in the glow of what happened with Joaquin Phoenix at the Oscars when he gave that wonderful talk about how the mother cow misses her baby if we take that baby away. You know he got the Oscars, the Golden Globes, everybody to go vegan for the events. And at first they said to him, oh no, we can't go vegan. We're going to have to have fish. But if you know Joaquin, you know that the reason he became vegan is as a child, he and his sisters and brothers were on board a ship when they saw a fish being gutted. And they said, no more, we're going vegan. So to the book, this one. When we were children, many of us read stories and we watched cartoons of animals who had mythological wondrous superpowers like dragons and unicorns, Pegasus, the flying horse. And what animal kind does is it sets out to show us that real animals, not mythological ones, do have superpowers. We don't have to go into space to look for intelligent forms of life. They're all around us, right here on Earth. More's the pity that we ignore their feelings, their intelligence, and we make them into shoes or snacks. As Stephen Hawking said, we'd better hope that if we do find alien life somewhere, they have more mercy on us than we have shown others here on Earth. Humans constantly underestimate the other animals. And I say other because we are but one species in the great orchestra of life. Even those of us who care deeply about them sometimes shortchange them. I know people who are just showing their love when they call dogs and cats their fur babies, but they aren't babies at all. They're whole and they're complete thinking and feeling individuals, usually grown up with interests of their own. They aren't simply existing to keep us company. And what's really weird is when experimenters call the other animals non-humans. To me, that's as daft as calling me a non-hamster. They're not non-anything. They're their own individual selves with thoughts and with feelings. Somehow, we have to stop ignoring those feelings. For example, when a mother cow's love for her infant is not even considered a factor if some human being wishes to have a glass of milk or make a pizza topping. And that milk was meant for those calves, just as Joaquin said at the Oscars. Let me give you some examples of animals' real life superpowers. Not all of them or you won't buy the book. The Western painted turtle can hold his breath under the ice for over 100 days, whereas we can't hold it for 10 minutes. Eels are part taser. They carry electrical charges throughout their bodies strong enough to stun a human being in a split second. Our military has tried to replicate spider silk that is pound for pound, 10 times tougher than Kevlar. And forget Spider-Man, geckos have suction cups, electronic suction cups on their feet so they can go up the ceiling and look down at us from the top. Almost no one is flying now and my flight to Toronto to a bookstore was deemed non-essential. But if you go to the airport, it's a maze of eateries. On the plane, you can get a snack and then they offer you food for sale. They must think human beings have to be fed every few minutes like a baby squirrel. Yet the godwit, which is this tiny little bird from New Zealand, flies 7,000 miles under his own power without stopping, no jet engines, no GPS, no drop of water. And speaking of squirrels, they bury nuts by the position of the stars in the sky. And they use sleight of hand. They will, if they think you're looking, bury the nut somewhere else 
but pretend to bury it where you're watching them. We use a GPS, but pigeons use low-frequency radio waves to navigate. Perhaps you've seen Peter's investigative footage of pigeon racers being told to let their pigeons go across a large body of water. Those pigeons only fly across a large body of water that they're deeply afraid of because their babies are kept on the other side in the loft and they're wonderful, wonderful mothers. In fact, the male and the female pigeon both make milk for their babies in their crops. And if you see a pigeon with his beak down another pigeon's beak, he may be kissing her because they're very romantic, or it may be that he's feeding his child. Well, the pigeon racers know this, so they make sure that the pigeon's babies are kept in the loft. So when they release those pigeons, they risk their lives and limbs and sometimes don't make it to get back to the other side to feed their babies. And did you know that tiny garden snails taken a few miles from their home will work their way back because it is their home, even though their maximum speed is 0.029 miles an hour. It might take them a year, but they'll try to get there. And if they sense winter or a storm coming, snails will build a door to the opening of their shell using slime and then a second door behind it, like double glazing on our windows. And they also work collectively when they're in trouble. The USDA issued a warning to transporters. Those are the people who deliver snails from snail farms to retailers. And they told them, secure the tops of the containers that you transport the snails in because they'll get together, they'll all come to the top and they'll push their way out and escape. Humans used to think that that rumbling sound elephants made was indigestion, but it's really powerful infrasound waves that they use to communicate with each other underground for more than a mile. They call it now silent thunder because only the elephants understand what that noise means. Rangers have found elephants cowering up against a fence line at the furthest border of a wildlife park in Africa. They'd been warned by another herd over a mile away that elephants there were being culled or killed. You know that even now, baby elephants are captured for export to Chinese amusement parks. Gorillas play tag and they swap roles. The little mouse speaks in ultrasound vibrations like the ones in our jet engines. And chimpanzees can outsmart college students in memory tests on a screen where you put up the numbers and then take them away and put the numbers back. They have almost photographic memories. So you have to guard against them spotting your ATM pin number or you'll be in trouble. And chimpanzees are 10 times stronger than a human being without going to the gym. Roger Fouts, he's a primatologist at the University of Washington, recounts how one of his students was walking a baby chimpanzee on a leash one day on the University of Washington grounds when the chimpanzee decided to be extremely naughty and climb a tree. The student, feeling he was late for class, tugged at the leash. And instead of the chimpanzee coming down, he pulled the student right up into the tree. As for dogs, their noses are so vastly superior to a human's, they're even now being used to catch child pornographers because those people put their videos of the terrible things that they do on a thumb drive. And if that thumb drive is hidden in a metal box and that's locked in a steel cabinet, the dogs can still sniff it out. So please remember, with that wonderful nose of theirs, it's awful to eat in front of them because those scents of wonderful food wafting to them drive them insane. And when they're out on their walk, reading the news with those schnozzes, it's terribly impolite to pull them along. Oh, and did you know that dogs, when they're given an MRI and someone has found a way to give them an MRI without stressing them, the very same part of their brains lights up when they're offered a treat as a businessman's brain lights up when he's offered a raise. 
Just reporting, not commenting. Cows have taught themselves to operate water pumps with their horns. And in Finland, a filly can press a symbol on a fence to request that a blanket be put on her and then press another symbol when she's too hot and wants the blanket taken off. Although it strikes me in Finland, it must be marvelous that you'd want a blanket taken off. It's so cold. Pacific striped octopuses will come up behind a shrimp and they'll tap him on the shoulder to confuse him while they're doing something they shouldn't be doing over his shoulder. And I'm sure you've seen the YouTube videos of dogs who wait till their humans have gone out and then they wait till all's quiet and then they push a chair up against the kitchen counter, open the cabinet door, take down what they want and then go all the way back down again and even put the chair back in place so you have no idea. One of my favorite monkey intelligence stories is of a botanist in Asia who had a monkey that he had trained to pick plants for him, maybe orchids, special plants. And one day he was walking along a ravine and he saw a beautiful orchid right down there over a sheer precipice. And he ordered the monkey to go down and pick the flower for him. But the monkey didn't want to go. It was too frightening. And he looked at the botanist and refused to move. And the botanist got quite angry and said, you go down there and pick the flower. And the monkey went to the corner, looked down, and hand over hand pulled up the vine that the flower was growing on, picked it, and gave it to the botanist. Now, who's more intelligent, the botanist or the monkey? And as for fish, like the little wrasse, who are also called the teeth-cleaning fish, because they actually swim inside a big fish's mouth and clean out the debris that are caught between their teeth. Fish actually line up to have their teeth cleaned the way we do at the dental hygienist. These tiny fish not only communicate using light waves or luminescence, but they've passed the gold standard for animal intelligence. They're able to recognize themselves in a mirror and preen, just like Kim Kardashian. I'm not razzing her because as you know, our honorary director, Pamela Anderson, got Kim to stop wearing fur. Dolphins invent unique whistle names for each other, and they can recognize an individual's whistle even if they haven't seen or heard of that dolphin in 20 years. That's quite a contrast to my high school reunion where everybody said to everyone else, oh, you haven't changed a bit, but you could see them peeking at those name tags to see who they were talking to and thinking, who's that? The fires in Australia was so haunting. It's very hard for anyone who cares about animals to have seen that footage. Koalas and kangaroos actually overcoming their natural fear of humans to come up to a bicycle and, and ask the person riding it for a drink of water because they knew they'd die without it. In Animal Kind, we focus on what wonderful, gentle family animals sheep are. And Australia, of course, is the land of sheep. We talk about how a sheep can recognize dozens of other sheep and human beings from photographs and how a ram will lie down and let other sheep jump on his back so they can go over a wall. But in Australia, during the fires, what you didn't see on television were all the sheep who had tried to escape and had run and run only to be caught by the fence lines of the sheep ranches and burned to death there. That's why we tell people, please, never buy wool. And during the California fires, perhaps you saw the stallion who was about to be loaded onto a trailer on the road. Behind him, there's a ranch that is enshrouded in smoke, and behind that is the approaching fire. Just as he's about to be loaded, he hears something no one else does. It turns out it's the whinny of a mare in that smoke field filled field. He breaks away. He canters to the field. He finds his way through the little opening and your heart is in your mouth. Then back he comes, leading the mare and her foal, maybe his wife and their daughter. 
and takes them out to the trailer to be loaded. He heard her and he acted altruistically, intelligently, bravely to save the mother and her child. He was like the rock in a blockbuster from Hollywood and yet no one will give him a medal because he's just a horse. In Animal Kind, we show how other animals experience joy. Crows delight in updrafts and jumping off buildings and letting themselves be carried up high again and by sliding down snow-covered roofs. Cows let out of a shed in winter in which they've been cooped up, maybe in Austria or somewhere, kick up their heels and they actually jump for joy. And bulls who weigh a ton, literally a ton, love to play with a tire rolling it around. In Animal Kind, you'll find tons of ways to help animals and convincing facts that you can use to get friends and family to recognize that all animals are our fellows and they need our respect and they need our protection. There are ideas for everyone, no matter your age, your career, your interests, whether you're rolling in money or poor as a church mouse. It's a bit like Christmas at Buckingham Palace with all the presents under the tree. I leave you with a quote from Anne Frank. She wrote, how wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. I hope you really enjoy the book Please consider buying it for someone on the fence, perhaps someone who has a dog or a cat and hasn't connected all the dots. Actually buy a crate of them and then you'll never have to think what gifts to give someone for a birthday. Thank you. Thank you for all you do for animals and to make a kinder world. It means absolutely everything.